Hello? Morning. Can everyone hear me? Hello? Okay, so we'll be starting the webinar um, now. Good morning to everyone and thanks for joining the webinar today. So just to introduce our activity, the State of the Philippine Environment is an annual forum aimed at updating the status of ecosystems in the country, focusing the most precious, uh, pressure, um, pressing issues and the ongoing struggle of our frontline environmental defenders. So it is um, held by the Center for Environmental Concern. By the way, I'm Leah Alonzo, the Executive Director of PEC. Um, this year, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're going to hold a series of webinars instead of an uh, um, on-the-ground forum. Um, uh, there will be three webinars, and this is the first one. So. Um, this focuses, um, the theme for today would be, uh, the theme for the webinar series um, is ecological roots and ecological solutions to the COVID-19 crisis. Because um, as of yesterday, there are already 5,807 confirmed cases, 387 deaths, and 487 recovered patients. So we also have a Observed um, a lack of response from the government uh, without having ample supply of personal protective equipment and um, ample supply of relief goods for those who were affected by the enhanced community quarantine. So many people are wondering what did um, actually cause this COVID pandemic. So there are many scientists who speculated that this is due to the exposure to wildlife trade or the encroachment to the habitats of wildlife exposing humans hi we can't hear you but no wala. Hello. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first of the webinar series is the ecological roots of the COVID-19 and pandemic. Uh, the second session would be um, risk governance in the time of COVID-19. And the third would be the state of Philippine environment in time of COVID-19. Um, the session is also the launching of Eben Foundation of their uh, publication of the State of the Philippine Environment um, in 2020. I think that through this initiative, uh, we can influence more action from different sectors in the country. So just to introduce the other organizers of the forum or this webinar series, aside from CEC, 
Um, we also have uh, Kalikasan People's Network for the Environment, Youth Advocates for Climate Action in the Philippines, Ibon Foundation, and the Earth Day Network. So um, that's it uh, for the introduction. And uh, I would like to introduce our facilitator for this webinar. Uh, our facilitator would be Christine Sabine, multimedia journalist, currently reporting on the COVID-19 pandemic and the Department of Health. She also covers science and news. She was formerly chief of reporters and Malanya reporter for Enquirer.net. She graduated cum laude from the University of the Philippines, Lilliman. Conrad Adenauer uh, Fellowship the University last year. So without further ado, thanks. Thank you. Salamat, Lia. Um, hindi ko sigurado kung malinaw yung um, kung naririnig nyo ako, pero hopefully okay yung connection natin. Uh, katulad nung mga ibang nakikinig sa ating State of the Philippine Environment Forum ngayong umaga, marami rin akong katanungan para sa ating keynote speaker. Uh, mula Enero, tinutukan na namin mga mamahayag itong issue ng COVID-19 pero ang focus na ngayon ng discussions na sa health sector and government response. Hindi na din masyadong nabibigyan ng panahon yung talakayan tungkol sa kung saan ba nang galing o paano nag-mutate itong coronavirus na ito. At hindi pa rin actually naglalabas ng gene sequencing results ang Pilipinas sa publiko uh, kaya hindi din natin alam kung sa China nga ba nag-originate yung kumakalat na strain dito sa Pilipinas. May ilang special reports tungkol doon sa animal markets sa Wuhan, China. Um, but beyond that, hindi rin talaga masyadong napapalalim yung public discussion, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. Ang layo ng forum natin ngayon ay lalong maintindihan kung ano nga ba ang nangyayari pag na-disturb o nabuksan itong ating forest ecosystems through wildlife trade at habitat loss. Um, maaring madalas nyong naririnig yung term na zoonotic diseases sa bansang tulad ng Pilipinas na kilala sa mega biodiversity. Gusto nating malaman kung ano nga ba ang risk ng homegrown infectious diseases sa atin. At syempre, gusto rin nating maibahagi sa publiko kung ano ba ang pwede nilang gawin para mapigilan ang susunod na COVID-19. Maswerte tayo at makakasama natin si Dr. Marilyn Parungaw Balolong para talakayin itong mga topics na ito ngayong araw. So, Doc Len is the Associate Dean for Research and Public Service of the College of Arts and Sciences in the University of the Philippines, Manila. She is a professor of microbiology and currently the head of the Applied Microbiology for Health and Environment Group in the college. She is an alumna of the UP Manila College of Public Health, Doctor of Public Health Program. Um, Doc Len has published more than 35 research papers in peer-reviewed local and international journals and two international book chapters. Her current projects involve functional food and environmental health, such as diversity profiling of microbial communities in forest over limestone ecosystem. So, alam ko na kamute ka yung lahat, but uh, let's give um, Doc Len uh, applause sa sa Filipino sign language ang palakpak e eh, ganyan. So, kahit hindi natin siya maririnig, um, pwede tayong pumalakpak para ipakita sa kanya. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Marilyn Parungaw Balolong. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, uh, actually, I'm overly excited to talk about something close to my heart, which is first, of course, viruses. And the second, of course, is the environment. No? Uh, clear ba yung audio from your end? Okay. All right. So I think I need to share my screen. So I'm going to share my screen for my slide. I gave my slide to the organizers, or if you wish to have a copy of that, they can give you the PDF later on. So I'll be starting no, uh, with my talk. I think for the questions uh, later, no? Tama ba ako, Ms. Christine? No? Yes, okay. All right, so everybody is seeing my slide right now? Okay. Okay, 
So uh, my talk today uh, is entitled Ecological Roots of COVID-19 and Pandemics. So I would really like to show you some of the links between ecological factors and the spread of diseases. Uh, I will also, uh, I will also uh, talk about other diseases outside of COVID-19 because ang unti-unti pa kasi ng information for COVID-19. No? So I would, I would uh, give you some examples of some zoonotic diseases that may share uh, the same characteristics that of SARS-CoV-2. So I am from the University of the Philippines, Manila. I think there are some in the audience na nakita ko kanina sa, sa video who comes from our uh, institution. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, we are the National University and considered to be the, uh, the Health Sciences Center. And uh, nakikita nyo kami palagi ngayon sa TV dahil we are one of the COVID-19 uh, referral hospitals. I would also like to acknowledge the, the presence of some, of, I, I think, members of my research group, the AMHERGE or the Applied Microbiology for Health uh, Environment Research Group uh, based in UP Manila. Uh, this is composed of undergraduate students, biology, biochemistry. We also have uh, master's students, uh, uh, microbiology, MBB, no? And uh, we also have uh, PhD students for the health sciences, pharmacy, and of course, the new breeds of MD, PhD students. No? So these particular students are a core of a, a team uh, conducting research for health and for the environment. Kanina mina mentioned about the microbial diversity of karst forest. No? This is uh, one of my favorite uh, projects. I think our boss is watching right now. <laughs> so hi, good morning, Sir De uh, Daniel. <laughs> so uh, also we have uh, for health, we have functional food. We are also studying antibiotic resistance genes and of course surveillance in uh, hospitals of MRSA. So but today I'm being, I will not be talking about all these projects. I'm zooming in on the ecological roots of COVID-19. No? And uh, let us link this uh, spread, possible spread from ecological factors. So let me start with disease reporting. So uh, perhaps on TV, uh, you've been hearing about pandemic or uh, outbreaks, no? or uh, how, many how many patients, how many cases, how many deaths, etc. cetera. No? So this is called disease reporting. No? So in, in a disease or a disease is uh, going to happen if there exists disease risk factors. No? So these are everywhere. Every day of your life, you are exposed to these risk factors. So it's up to you whether you are going to contract that risk factors and have the disease or not. It's you, your household, your neighborhood, your your city, your community, your country, etc. No? So once these particular existing factors cause this uh, disease, no, the spread of infectious diseases can be measured through the following. It could be outbreaks, endemic, epidemic, or what we have right now, the pandemic. No? So we'll just differ on the degree of um, uh, occurrences, no, and of course the geographic location na, that uh, it would cover. For instance, when you heard outbreak, no, so it's a sudden increase in occurrences of a disease in a particular time and place, no. So, so wait, I, I'll, I'll, okay. Sandali, ha? may nag-appear sa ano ko eh, so nag-cover yung slide ko. Saglit lang. Saglit lang ha. Uh, what what is happening? Ah, uh, may may sabi kasi this meeting is being recorded, so nasdataklaban yung slide ko. Hahaha. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Uh, will this automatically be off or should I press uh, something? Uh, 
I think Doc may continue. Uh, wait, wait lang. Uh, ay, bakit hindi ko makontrol yung aking slide? Oh, eh, anyway, I, 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 I have a kodigo so I can continue, right? <laughs> you, you're not seeing naman yung nagbablock doon sa PowerPoint nga, right? Wala naman, Doc. You can, okay, I okay. continue I, doon. In, in, oh, in, I, I cannot see my cursor kasi, so I'll just continue now. So anyway, so so that is the the tra uh, the disease reporting. So we start with the outbreak. If there's a sudden increase in occurrences no, of a disease, and this is this will just involve a certain duration of time or a certain place. Like for instance, naririnig niyo yung dengue outbreak or the leptospirosis outbreaks. No, so it is contained in a certain uh, location or it is contained or it is. Uh, occurring in a certain uh, number of cases only. So now, of course, the outbreak can progress. No? So it can progress. It would depend on the patient or the host, I mean. It would depend on the pathogen. May it be a virus, bacteria, fungi, etc. It can, it may become endemic no? or epidemic. No? So when you say endemic, this is constant maintained increase in occurrences of a disease in a geographic area. So nakakontain lang siya sa isang lugar. Hindi siya umaalis kunwari sa NCR, hindi siya umaalis sa Cebu, hindi siya umaalis sa Palawan. Dun lang. So that's endemic. But once it would rapidly spread to, uh, to other uh, locations, that's gonna be epidemic. No? Uh, but, but you know, the epidemic could also boom out of proportion and spread across a large region. So imagine right now, we're having the COVID-19 pan pandemic. It's, it started with just one city, one, and then one country, and then several continents, and now it covers the whole uh the whole planet no so it's a pandemic now no so for instance if if uh, you are recording cases in multiple areas of continents or globally that's already considered a pandemic okay uh, okay so let's take a look at the history of important diseases and the pandemics that happened uh, Globally, no. So uh, the first was the Antonin Plague, no. So yung mga drawings dyan na mukam pom poms, no. So they just represent how much death, no, uh, or how much uh, fatalities was uh, recorded during those times. So so some of them perhaps uh, you're not familiar with, no. But those big pom poms na nakita niyo dyan, those are yung mga tomatak. No, sa, sa medicine or sa mga health uh, books natin, no? the bubonic plague. No? So if, if you are familiar with the bubonic plague, ito yung mga nangingitin yung, uh, yung uh, mga, ano, mga kamay nila no? or the black plague. The smallpox, uh, I, I'm sure my, my students would love the smallpox because of Jenner. This is uh, the, the challenge. Uh, during that period was this particular pathogens have no vaccine at all, no? And so Edward Jenner suddenly realized or came up with something which is now, uh, of course, uh, the vaccine, no? And uh, of course, we are very familiar with the Spanish flu, no? Ito yung mga naglalabasan na uh, black and white photos na compare nila palagi, no? And then uh, how they have uh, addressed that, no? And of course, uh, HIV AIDS, which is still no, uh, uh, have escalating cases worldwide. The Philippines is sharing quite a lot with these cases. No, and uh, uh, in the in the recent uh, uh, time now, in, uh, in uh, globally, we have been recorded the swine flu. If you would remember that that particular flu uh, pandemic have. Uh, Initially, no, pinraktis na tayo na hindi pwedeng mag 
hawak kamay sa church, no? Uh, there are some schools I remember last 2009 that uh, closed, no? If you would remember that. And then after the swine flu, there came, of course, the coronaviruses, no? So the coronaviruses, those are the SARS. And then that was followed by MERS. And of course, now the novel coronavirus or the COVID-19. So I'll be exploring more in details of these coronaviruses. So the, the worst pandemic uh, in world history are uh, charted in this particular figure. And then if you could see, they are uh, compared no? so kung how many deaths, no? how many deaths they have uh, 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 they have cost, no? So ngayon, ang tali din natin sa pagbibigay ng report ng WHO or DOH is how many cases, how many have recovered, how many died, no? So this will also uh, give an idea for the health uh, workers and management to speed up ba ng kanilang ano or sabihin natin na baka bumabagal po yung in services or are there anything else that we could do based on these statistics no so uh, currently the united states no uh, ang nangunguna na ngayon so they have all surpassed china's numbers no uh, globally i think we have uh, more than 2 million cases already and uh, almost 140,000 deaths globally no so the philippines also have a share with this no so meron um, uh, parang medal statistics lang ito ng olympics ano <laughs> or ng sea games no but uh, uh, i hope medals nga yan para medyo second tie silver diba but uh, sadly these numbers translates into cases no and and deaths and recoveries no so sabi nila okay lang yun maliit naman yung cases sa Asia, no? Para mas marami sa Europe, but still, one case is still a case, no? So, and we would really like to know bakit ba may ganito and how do we address this particular pandemic? So, as I have mentioned uh, a while ago, there have, there has been, uh, to date, not to date, uh, three coronavirus uh, infections reported to be transmitted to humans, no? Um, uh, later, I think I have a slide wherein uh, coronaviruses naman talaga can, can be found in animals. No? So they can infect animals. They are zoonotic. But so far, these three coronaviruses pa lang yung nakikita nila or reported para ano na, na naging uh, transmitted or nagkaroon ng transmission sa humans. No? So the first was SARS. It was named after the symptoms that it causes. Uh, severe acute respiratory syndromes no so it uh, caused more than 700 deaths no this is followed uh, in 2012 by the mers cov no so to to differentiate it from sars they they utilize or use the name from where it originated no so the middle east respiratory syndrome para malaman nila that that particular coronavirus was uh, Originate, originated from Middle East. And then, of course, recently, uh, uh, starting uh, late 2019, we have been visited uh, by this uh, coronavirus again. This is uh, typical of SARS-CoV-1. However, there are some differences. No? So they call it uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 or CoV-2, the second SARS-CoV. So, uh, uh, this particular naming is just to prevent na yung sinasabi nilang pangit, pakinggan pag yung bansa namin, kagaya ng Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, no? eh, nakatatak sa isang pandemic. So they, make, they may just made it technical. No? So still new cases are being reported daily up to, the, up to now. No? Uh, Nag-uusap tayo ngayong araw na to. And we're really hoping that, uh, no, pa, uh, that uh, onwards, eh, matatapos natin ang crisis na ito. No? So let me just briefly, uh, I, I, would, I would try not to be too, too, too technical with this one, but this is just to, uh, to show you some of the characteristics of the virus itself. No? 
for a virologist kasi, kung nag-aaral ka ng virology, ito yung mga unang-una mong titignan. Anong parts meron siya? No? Meron, ba, meron ba siyang covering? No? Anong nasa loob? DNA ba siya? RNA, etc. No, because how? Paano nyo ba tatalunin yung kalaban nyo? Tiba, you have to know, you have to learn or discover, no, their weakness. No, so for 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 some virologists, they started studying this one. They started to sequence the genomes because the genomes will give you an idea what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses of the viruses. We can discover no uh, antivirals we can discover vaccines no so in in the table below meron din nakalagay on the differences no of the first sars cov and the second uh, sars cov no so uh, i will uh, not be dealing so much with that you can you can probably just learn it later after the talk all right so uh, what's so essential with this one? No? So so lagi ko ngan sinasabi sa classic ko, please do not memorize. No, I, I just really would like to to tell you something very very important with this slide. No, so this slide is the viral replication cycle. So lagi nating sinasabi, pag virus yan, pahinga ka lang, right? So so flu. No, that is because viruses may mga limitations ng buhay yan. No? Pag natapos niya yung kanyang replication cycle, lalabas na siya and you're okay. Ang pinakamahalaga doon, uh, nasa tamang resistensya ka. So your immunity will help you recover. The discovery about this particular uh, uh, replication cycle is about the receptor. So nakikita nyo ba from the upper, uh, I don't know if I can... Uh, but uh, the, the ACE2 receptor on the upper left side, wherein the viruses attach to it. Okay? So that is very crucial. So kung alam na natin ngayon, ang bilis na ngayon ano, na namalaman, ah, saan ba sila didikit? No? So, so if you happen to know that this particular receptor, so kumbaga ito yung kanyang GRO, ito yung pinto na magpapapasok sa kanya sa cells, no? If this is uh, the key receptor, then pwede kang gumawa ng antiviral or drug which targets this receptor. Okay? So, kung meron kang drug versus that, wala nang tatanggap for attachment or entry. No? So, something, something like that. No? Kaya gusto kong sabihin sa inyo. That's the good thing. No? That's the good thing about discovery. The major not so good thing is that ACE2 receptors are present in key organs of the human body. No? So, first is the lung and the second, the heart. No? Kaya kung makikita nyo sa mga severely ill patients, meron din silang mga cardiorespiratory problems. No? And of course, marami pa rin silang studies na tinitingnan ngayon like meron din bang ACE2 that is compatible with SARS-CoV in the liver, in the kidney, and other very vital organs. So abangan natin yan. All right. So, sabi natin kanina, the coronaviruses are zoonotic. So, nakikita nyo ba yung mga sandamakmak na kahayupan dito sa, sa slide na ito, no? So, coronaviruses are alpha, beta, gamma, or delta. So, naka-group naka lang sila accordingly. This is probably because of the genome sequence of each of those coronaviruses. May pagkakaiba, no? So, some of the coronaviruses reported in animals only. Ibig sabihin, wala pa, hindi pa natin nakikita na, na matransmit siya sa humans. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, na natatransmit sa humans will be the gamma coronaviruses and the delta coronaviruses. No? So these are avian viruses. It can be spread uh, from the same species, kaya nakita nyo yung drawing, parehong sa bird. And then of course, if these particular birds will, will have interactions, no? interactions with other animals, or perhaps interactions with fecal material that contains particularly uh, those viruses being shed in the fecal matter, then it is possible. No? It is possible 
they will also get the viruses. No? So getting the viruses doesn't mean that they will be infected, sick, no? severe agad, hindi, not necessarily. No? So they can serve as the end host, ibig sabihin, siya yung magkakasakit. They may serve just a uh, intermediate host. No? So siya lang yung magkikip, parang kumbaga guardian, no? or they can serve as the tinatawag natin na reservoir host. No? So nagpaparami, nagpaparami lang siya. Eh. No? <laughs> so uh, take, a, take note of the alpha and then the beta coronavirus is there. So may nakita tayong drawing doon, no? transmission in humans. This is because alpha coronaviruses and beta coronaviruses have been reported. No? So may marami ng papers ito, you could easily Google them. No? Uh, that uh, these coronaviruses have been transmitted in humans. At merong isa doon na naka, naka, nakatala ka-highlight. No? <laughs> Ito daw ang salarin. No? So, so they say that the alpha and the beta coronaviruses are lodged, no? are uh, kumbaga inherently ay nasa bats. No? So nanan, sa nananahimik na bat. Okay. And of course, uh, this can be transferred ecosystem-wise kung ano ba yung role ni paniki sa ecosystem. No? So later, I will be talking to you about that. Alright. So ano pa ba yung mga recent zoonosis? So I've mentioned about MERS. I've mentioned about SARS. Have you heard about the Ebola virus? No? So the Ebola viruses are also zoonotic. So nakikita din yan sa mga uh, animals and it can also be transmitted in humans and there there has been several Ebola outbreaks that happened no, in Africa no so I'll be talking about that later on what what was what is the contribution no, uh, of the environmental changes and concerns about Ebola no and then of course we have the avian flu no I think we still have right now and uh, I'll be also talking about something about the flu. Flu is one of my favorite uh, viruses. Kaya nung nag-aaral tayo dito tungkol sa uh, COVID-19, I always make parallel ano, comparison with influenza. No? Kasi lahat tayo makaka-relate dyan. No? Uh, siguro mga yung, kung yung iba sa inyo eh, magkakatrangkaso ng once a year, yung iba talagang once a month may trangkaso. No? Alright. So what are zoonosis and the how prevalent they are? Pag sinabi natin zoonosis, uh, they come from animals and they can be transmitted to humans. You know? And then 60% uh, of all infectious diseases in humans are zoonotic. So can you imagine that? So we cannot do away with animals. No? Um, we have pets. No? Sometimes sa tanongin natin, uh, are you a carrier? <laughs> no, are you a carrier of a certain disease? No, kaya sometimes we really have to also practice good hygiene no, sa ating mga pets. And 75% of all emerging, sabihin yung mga bago na infectious diseases, are zoonotic. Alarming, no? Nanggaling sila sa hayop, napunta sa atin, Bakit napunta sa atin? <laughs> yung, yung question, no? Kasi I, I remember when we were uh, being lectured of viruses, sabi nila, oh, viruses are very specific. You know, if viruses infect plant, plant lang yan. So pag kumain ako ng virus-infected plant, hindi ako mamamatay kasi hindi naman ako plant, no? There are viruses that are like that. No? They are specific, no? Meron lang silang gustong hosts na na ano na, na gusto nilang i-infect but there are zoonotic viruses like this one no from animals they can be transmitted to humans and 75% of all emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic so we really have to do something about it really have to think about it what's the link and how do we ad how do we address no possible uh, concepts no paano pa natin siya talaga dapat aralin at the address no okay what what are factors uh, that uh, helps in increasing zoonosis emergence so there are some factors uh, that have been identified actually konti lang tong nilagay ng UN environment program no but there are several uh, there is quite a long list no na, na pwede nating gawing culprit 
kung bakit possibly nagkaroon ng mga emergence ng zoonosis. No? So deforestation and other land use changes, if we cut the forest, if we change the forest into a subdivision no? or agriculture to something else, so yun yung nag-iisa sa mga reasons kung sabi nila bakit nagkaroon. Ano? Another one is illegal and poorly regulated wild, wildlife trade. Um, there was an instance that almost every day nasa news na merong nahuhuli na nagninenok or nagtatakas no, ng ating mga wildlife. No? Bakit? Anong gagawin nila doon? No? Sa tingnan natin yan later. No? Another one is intensified agriculture and livestock production. Intensified would mean going beyond the usual practice. No? So, so uh, sinasabi nila na yung kumbaga, kapag sobra, <laughs> kapag sumusobra ka sa lahat ng bagay, may pangit na consequence. No? And then of course, the spread of uh, antimicrobial resistance due to uh, not no, irresponsible antibiotic usage. And uh, of course, climate change. No? So, uh, isa, isa rin din ito sa factors. Hindi, lang, hindi, hindi pa lang nila masyadong napipinpoint ang lahat ng ito for COVID-19. But I will give you some examples later that have already reported cases. No? Na kapag nangyari ang mga factors na ito, may corresponding na uh, outbreaks. No? All right. So the interaction of humans or livestock with wildlife exposes them to risk of spillover of potential pathogens. Uh, there was an incident before in swine flu wherein no, yung mga nag-aalaga ng mga baboy, sila yung unang nakakontract ng infection. No? This is practically because sila yung close, no? sila yung palaging nagkikita araw-araw. No? So, for mo, so for many zoonoses, they are focusing, no? uh, tinututukan nila to, no? uh, that livestock serves as an epidemiological bridge between wildlife and human infections. No? So kaya nilagay ko dito yung piglet or pig, no? yan ang favorite naming arali na nag-aaral kami ng doctorate, no? na yung baboy. Para siyang incubator, no? Tanggap lang siya ng tanggap ng kung ano-anong mga pathogens. And then, ang uh, theory nila is that when it goes out of the swine, it's something else, no? Although, of course, it's not 100% proven, but there are some allegations of such. Okay. So, ano ba yung mga allegations na yan, no? So, sinasabi nila that some viruses can jump species, no? So, pwede siyang ng ibang species. So for instance, from an avian or mga birds papunta sa humans, pwede rin naman magkaroon ng adaptation. So ito yung may middle species, kagaya nito, from birds to swine to humans. Okay. Pwede rin naman that both the bird and the humans will go to the pig. Ay, sandali. Wala ba ako or okay lang? <coughs> yeah. So, so both the viruses from the avian or the birds, humans, they can infect the pig. They would reassort, meaning, you know, magpapalit-palit sila ng content, and then they would infect humans. Now, this is the theory during the swine flu era in 2009, wherein siguro yung next pandemic daw will be like this, no? But we were wrong, no? It was COVID-19, no? But this was the theory that perhaps due to the nature of influenza, yung influenza kasi, yung kanyang, di, uh, kanyang RNA, putol-putol, no? Segment-segment siya, hindi yung isang strand na dere-derecho. So kung meron kang putol-putol, pwede siyang mag exchange no so or magreassort kaya ito yung ginawa nilang theory okay all right so the drivers of zoonotic disease emergence are changes in the environment so mostly anthropogenic to no kaya sa sinasabi nila laging tao etchosera talaga no etchosera tayo no kung ano-anong uh, we think that we own the planet no and uh, we think that by owning it we can do anything we want 
no? And thus, those particular interventions, yung mga ginagawa natin, pakikialam na yan, ito na yung mga consequences na yan, no? So, some of our uh, contributions will be land use, no? And, uh, of course, it contributed to climate change right now, no? So, although marami pa rin hindi naniniwala sa climate change, I do know why. Uh, even amidst of several data, no, I, I really don't know why. And then, of course, there, there has been changes in animals or human host. Yung mga dating reported, no, hindi naman siya dapat pupunta sa ganitong host. Host na niya ngayon, no? It was initially not infecting humans. Infecting humans na ngayon, no? So, so it, it's really a, uh, a challenge, no, for, for virologists. And of course, for other microbiologists, kasi meron ding bacteria, no? Apart from the virus, meron pa tayong bacteria na kinakalaban. Meron pa tayong fungi. Meron pa tayong protozoa. Okay? So for example, bat-associated viruses emerged due to the loss of bat habitat. No? Bakit nawala ng tirahan ng mga to? Ano ba yung mga activities natin? Pwede yung deforestation. Nananahimik lang naman siya sa gubat, sa kuweba. No? Uh, one culprit is mining no? nananahimik sila sa loob ng kuweba nananahimik sila doon and then they, there comes this group digging inside and then they would of course be forced to stray away no? so these particular, these particular things may start with theory but if you would study again the ecology you would further say oo nga ano? no? parang ganon so example so, ito naman talaga yung usual na nangyayari, no? So, the bat, the bat will uh, eat the fruits sa kapitbahay, na minsan napapagkama lang aswang, no? So, they will be eating the fruits or the ripe fruits, and then these particular fruits may, you know, may, may fall to the ground, it may, if may livestock na alaga yung mga tao, they would be eating that particular fruit, and then, of course, close encounter with that livestock will expose the humans to that particular viruses. So, bakit biglang nagpo-forage, nagpo-forage yung mga bats sa puno na malapit sa inyo? <laughs> Kasi wala na siyang makuhang uh, pagkain no? doon sa gubat kung nasan siya. Wala na kasing gubat. No? Something like that. But, the bigger story for this one is that it can cause a great big problem related to epidemics no and right now it's a pandemic no so so if you if you parang tao din bigyan ko kay ng analogy pag nawalan or inalisan mo tama ba yung tagalog ko uh, nawalan ng bahay ang isang tao manatili ba siya doon sa lugar na kung nasaan siya no it would it, it would go somewhere where it can forage food or it will find survival, no? And of course, uh, the bats here, so I, I'm just taking a bat na example because this is related to COVID, no? But there are others, no? Napakarami pang wildlife that are related to inf as the spread of infections. So, kagaya nito, no? So, if you would look at the figure, so nananahimik naman talaga yung mga organism, so the, the exchange of viruses are just within their species. No? Sila-sila lang. No? And of course, by the evolution, adaptation, and uh, kung sino ang fit, yun yung matitirang bat species. Parang ganyan, no? But uh, if you remove some of the factors that is associated with its uh, environment, nagkakaroon na yan ng chance wherein this bat species will be interacting with other wildlife. And worse, interacting with people via hunting. No? So yung iba, no? hunting, bakit nila hinahunt? Pagbabenta or kakainin or kukunin yung kanilang mga parts, etc. Et okay? And of course, uh, this is a very important case, not just for COVID, for Ebola, and other important viruses. And ang nasama nito, kumakalat na siya ngayon sa urban area. Di ba kayo na surprise? Why Manila of all, ano, talagang ito yung city, no? NCR, ito yung city. Bakit nandito lahat, no? 
aren't you surprised? Okay. Sabi nila ang chismis <laughs> from bat soup. Ayan. Totoo ba ang chismis na it is from bat soup? That was the first, uh, I think, story that was released that uh, this particular virus was obtained by eating bats. No? Although there was no direct link no, na talagang nanggaling dun yun sa bat soup, there was no direct evidence, no, or accurate evidence na nanggaling talaga sa soup, but it cannot be denied that bats and other wildlife are being consumed in China, are being traded in China, particularly in Wuhan. So that can hindi siya surprising, no? So, pwede ganyan. So, marami rin nagtanong na, so, kung kakain ba ako ng bat soup, makukuha I would eat bat soup, right? So, another one is, siguro, engineer yan in Wuhan lab. Have you heard about that particular issue, no? So, may mga glabasan din yan, it's an engineered in a certain laboratory in Wuhan, no? Uh, there has been, um, uh, no evidence pala, pa, pa, ha, pa, as of today, <laughs> that it is engineered. Uh, so far, the evidence points that it still came or it is still uh, being given to us by Mother Nature. No? Uh, andun pa rin siya. No? So, hindi pa rin siya engineered. But the recent thing is that uh, it, uh, there is a virus that may come or that have originated from the Wuhan lab. No, hindi siya engineered, but it may really came from the Wuhan lab. So it's not really a question of is there a mad doctor, you know, uh, pinaglalaroan niyo itong virus, tapos ikakalat niya yung virus. Not really, no? So it's, it's, uh, I think this is a matter of biosecurity, no? Na hindi niyo <laughs> kinuntin at tinago mabuti and virus no it happens and uh i don't know if there is, there is uh, someone here watching right now that is a member or trained biosafety officer of the national training for biosafety and biosecurity ayan so nagpapadami sila ngayon this is to make sure that really yung mga ating mga inaaral sa laboratory na pathogens are secured you know, na hindi siya makakalabas from the laboratories no just to make sure that we will not be hearing any problematic uh, stories about pathogens being engineered. No? Ano yung, yung pang novela, yung mga ganyan. No? Uh, paborito ko yung mga novela yung ganyan. Eh, no? so, so, but but uh, of course, if you will ask me, it's very easy to engineer a virus right now. It's so easy. Just give me the money, the materials, the lab. It's so easy. But why would you do that if you're an, an, an ethical scientist, diba? So let's move on. Let me show you why they told the people that it's really from human nature, from, from uh, mother nature, no? So uh, they have uh, shown here uh, that uh, the new coronavirus is uh, uh, as a single introduction into humans. And then from human, it was spread from human to human. No? So ito yung inanalyze nila yung genome and then dito nagcluster sa baba yung ating novel coronavirus genome alongside with a bad coronavirus that was found in Yunnan. No? So, so sinabi nila na perhaps, no, perhaps that it really came from bats. No? So if you would recall yung SARS natin came from bats also and uh, they have... Uh, mentioned or identified the civets no as uh, the next host before coming to humans no ngayon ang kanilang sinisisi for SARS-CoV ay pangolin nabasa niyo ba yan sabi ko ano nananahimik yung pangolin sa gubat and so we thought no that nananahimik yung mga pangolin sa gubat but uh, there were, there are some stories also that pangolins are considered to be a very precious trade material in China for their meat and their scales. No? So, so that's probably because of that. And of course, mining, as I have mentioned a while ago, which have exposed bats to humans. All right. So ecosystem, 
no? uh, integrity. No? So if, if your ecosystem is uh, strong enough, it can underline human health and development. No? So for instance, human-induced environmental changes, it will favor particular host only, particular vector, or particular pathogens. So for instance, if the changes is favorable, so maging maganda yung environment, then you will not be favoring vectors like daga, no? or you will not be favoring a weak host or a sickly host. Magmalulusog yung mga tao dyan. But if, you're ch if the changes, no? if the changes due to human doon sa iyong environment favors the hosts na sickly or favors the vectors like rats, no? etc., it will also favor the pathogens to increase. Thus, the, the risk factors are high. It will expose, uh, it will be exposed no, to the people. And then, of course, disease spread. Okay? So, ecosystem integrity is very important. No? It can regulate diseases by supporting a diversity of species so that it is more difficult for one pathogen to spill over, to amplify, or to dominate. No? So, dito, dito ko ipapasok nga ho yung napaka-importante talaga ng ating biodiversity at integrity ng ating ecosystem. Whether it's a city, a community, or even a household. So, to analyze, no, para malaman natin anong contribution mo <laughs> sa disease na ito. No? So, let me talk about the disease triangle. When we, when we study diseases, we always... Uh, try to, to check it out here. Bakit nag-umpisa? Ano ba yung mga factors to consider? First is the host. Ikaw yon, Tayo. No? Susceptible ka ba? Ano ba yung susceptible? Napakadali mong makokontract or makukuha yung infection. Bakit? Pwedeng meron ka ng iniindang sakit ngayon. Baka kasi hindi ka kumakain ng masustansya. Baka kasi hindi ka nakatira comfortably, like nakatira ka lang sa ilalim ng tulay. No? Ito yung mga factors. No? So, your role, ang pwede mo lang talaga magawa sa disease triangle na to, ay maging malusog. No? So, so, make yourself uh, strong enough so that you will not be susceptible to any infection. Now, the more important thing also, in this disease triangle, will be your pathogen and your environment. So, host, pathogen, and environment. Okay? So, itong tatlong to, they interact with one another. They will be exposed to one another, and so forth and so on. So, imagine, mag-example tayo ng kukunari, COVID-19. Sino yung mga susceptible na sinasabi natin sa DOH, sinasabi ng DOH? yung mga may underlying respiratory problems, right? Susceptible sila. Okay? Another one no, is uh, yung mga may sakit, elderly, etc. Okay? Sila yung high risk. Ano yung pathogen natin? SARS-CoV. It's a new virus. Okay? So it's a new virus. It's, uh, it's relatively unknown. Wala tayong alam kung paano ba natin siya papatayin. So, so now, studies are being conducted. And then the environment. We have several environments. Meron tayong tropical countries. Meron tayong temperate countries. Okay? Meron tayong household environment. Meron tayong nasa labas ka environment. No? So nakikita nyo ba yung picture? Ito yung magkakam into play. So dito nyo maiintindihan yung Bakit tayo kinukulong sa bahay right now? No? Because they doesn't like us to be exposed with the pathogen, lalo na kung susceptible ka. That is the red thing there, the disease. No? So to, for you not to get a disease, make sure that the pathogen is not so virulent. Make sure that you are not susceptible and make sure that you will not come in contact with a conducive environment. No? Kagaya na PGH. No? Huwag po kayong pumunta doon kung hindi naman kailangan. Alright. So is the environment or changes in the environment a driver 
for disease spread. So now my examples will not be really focusing on COVID, but I'm, I'm also going to talk about several zoonotic diseases so that you could relate. No? So environmental changes have a huge impact on the emergence and re-emergence. Ano yung difference nun pag sinabi natin emergence bago talaga? Yung mga re-emergence, dati na sila, nawala, tas bumalik. No? So yung mga re-emerging infectious diseases. So this happens mostly in countries with high biodiversity and serious unresolved environmental, social, and economic issues. No? So, highlight ko yung unresolved environmental, social, and economic issues. I really don't get it why a certain place or a certain area will not agree no, to resolve environmental issues together. No? So, I, I really, I read, that's my question. So, to avoid or control outbreaks, kailangan meron tayo nito sa ating area. No? So there should be integrated surveillance then. So you're not just uh, you're not just tallying people. Sino ang nagkasakit? If so, anotik yan, are there bats around? Saan ang galing yung bat? Okay. O saan ang galing yung baboy kung nanggaling siya sa baboy? Paano niya nakuha yung baboy? Etc. Those are those should be considered in the surveillance system. Effective outreach programs. No? Sino po sa inyo ang nabahay-bahay na at pinasabihan tungkol sa COVID-19? Paano kung wala siyang TV? Paano kung wala siyang radio? Paano kung wala siyang cellphone? Hindi niyo alam na may COVID. Ganito na pala kalala ang COVID-19. Mamamalengke pa siya, tapos papagalitan mo. Eh, hindi naman niya alam. No? So, so, we really have to be um, serving the grassroots no, in terms of uh, outreach program. So due to strong global and local influence on emergence of infectious diseases, we need holistic approaches. This is very, very important no, in low-income nations, particularly for control. So uh, this is a very good diagram. This is not, not for COVID, but this is for diseases of Poverty. So ito yung mga sakit na laging nakikita sa mga third world countries. And if you would take a look, ang laki ng impact ng environmental changes, climate change, no? na ecosystem changes, bakit nagkakaroon ng mga diseases? So these diseases are mostly vector-borne or ibig sabihin ang galing siya sa isa pang hayop bago pumunta sa humans kagaya ng insekto, lamok, pulgas, etc. o yung malalaki kagaya ng baboy or ano na. No? And of course, foodborne and waterborne. Bakit kapag may bagyo, dami nagtataes sa ating mga evacuation centers, no? So kailangan nating tignan yung environment related issues doon. Hindi lang yung pathogen ang pinapakailaman natin. Tingnan din natin yung environment. Okay, another uh, very nice, ano dito, very nice figure uh, that I got from Garchi Torena here. Uh, tinitingnan din nila dito na to, for us to control. Because kapag nagkasakit ang buong mundo, economy will fall down. No? Takot na takot sila dyan ngayon. Eh, no? But we'll economy if we lift or not lift the ECQ. No? So, so we have to study including, no, we have to include the environment, the exposure of the people to the environment so that aarali natin na alin ba doon ang pwedeng tanggalin na hindi mamamroblema yung economy but you will not be exposing the people to the pathogen. Okay? Alright. Bigyan po kayo ng ilang example. So itong mga examples na to are all uh, uh, published, no? reported. Reported itong mga ito na kapag nagkaroon ng environmental uh, phenomenon, eh, tumataas ang cases. No? Example, when uh, the El Nino happened, no? so there was drought, the cases of malaria or waterborne and vector-borne diseases suddenly surge. No? And uh, in some areas, although uh, may na-report naman na may mga malaria cases that went down, no? but indeed, meron pa rin 
influence yung El Nino at drought doon, no? Uh, floods, no? Or La Nina, no? So there has been reports of increased uh, severe diarrhea cases. At dito po nakita nila that uh, nakita nila yung diarrhea cases that are caused by antibiotic resistant uh, bacteria. Okay? Deforestation, uh, it was reported that deforestation have increased the incidence of Lyme disease. Ang Lyme disease po caused by Borrelia, ang vector nito or ang kanyang uh, before it reach humans, ipupunta muna siya sa naalam niyo ba kung anong insekto to? <laughs> Makikita niyan sa ating mga pet sarap tanggalin. No? So when it bit you, you can contract Lyme disease and of course Ebola. So sinasabi nila that uh, deforestation have uh, caused some of the wildlife to lose their homes. So because of the loss of homes, they came to the community, bumaba sila ng bundok, and there in the community, they have close interactions with humans. Um, there are some reports that says that once nasa humans, pwede mag-adapt si virus. Then later on, pag transfer niya sa bagong human, eh pwede na niya ma-infect si next human. But of course, it is not true or universal for all. No? So pwedeng for some, but hanggang ngayon, kailangan nating aralin each pathogen, isa-isa. No? They will be unique. Land use conversion. So itong mga nananahimik na rodents, they prefer the woodland. No? Gusto nila yun. But if you convert those woodlands, for instance, into agriculture or worse, into cities, yeah, there has been reports of the increase in the uh, hantavirus respiratory syndrome. No? So, ito mga hantavirus will first go to the rodent and then the rodent. Yung mga fecal materials nila yun, tsaka sa hair, pwede nyo siyang ma-inhale and then ma-infect kayo ng hantavirus. Urbanization. Ano ba yung urbanization? Siyempre, magiging social tayo ng konti. Tataas ang buildings, no? And then, um, uh, medyo angat sa buhay, ganyan. But of course, the consequences of urbanization will be increase in uh, human population in a certain uh, area. There has been cases, no? increased cases of leptospirosis in urban areas as well as Zika. No? So uh, because of this, uh, they are asking whether is this particular lamok, which is also the lamok for dengue, no? is uh, at home sa mga urban areas rather than the rural areas. And of course, sa leptospirosis, lahat tayo sa NCR, nako, very ano sa atin to, no? kapag tag-ulan, bilang ka lang ng ilang days, alam mo na may merong lepto kasi nakakasabay natin tumawid yung mga daga doon, minsan kasabay mo pa magklase sa UP Manila, no? <laughs> All right. So I am, uh, this is, I think, the last part of my slides. I am going to introduce some ecology-based strategies no? or paradigms to address pandemics. Uh, uh, I hope that this will really be considered no? um, as uh, one of the parts ng kanilang mga policies. No? So I will be introducing the holobiont concept. Uh, the One Health and the Planetary Health. I'm sure some of you have already heard these particular paradigms. And uh, for, for some of you who will be uh, first-timer na makarinig to, I hope you'll be also appreciating these particular concepts. And these are very important for me, no, for me to uh, be utilized to address pandemics. So the holobiont concept was uh, introduced by Miller and yung mga mikrobyo sa buong katawan. No? So, the holobiont concept here
Hello. Am I still here? Hello. Hello, am I still here? Opo, we can hear you now. Ah, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Kasi parang sabi ko, parang wala. <laughs> All right. So, so, this is the holobiont concept. No? So, the holobiont means the host tile and our yes, microbiota. Okay. So, total microorganisms. No? So, in this concept, uh, they are proposing that we study Together, so this whole biont is together to form an individual you know, with a metagenome under natural selection. So in the case of industrialized urban habitat, you know, so they say that pwedeng improve or pwedeng restore ang urban microbial biodiversity like rewilding or ang tinatawag nilang microbiome rewilding you know, which will benefit the whole biont health. So in this case, ang mangyayari dito is you are aiding or helping to treat the urban non-communicable disease epidemic. No? So isang, isang magandang ano yan. So this is the holobion concept which may also uh, help. No? So let's do this. I don't know why. Naglolo ko yung aking cursor. Wait lang po ah. 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 Anyway, okay. So this is a picture of the holobiont concept, na um. So if you would uh, take a look at that, so that uh, this differentiates the, the areas. No? So meron tayong wild or the rural areas. Can you see the, the beautiful interaction of the ecosystem, the animals, and the humans? So it says that the holobiont here is uh, very uh, strong, no? uh, very adaptive no? to... And uh, of course, pre immune protective uh, to prevent uh, any incident, any cases of diseases. No, and then of course, in the middle you see the city. No, the city, wherein uh, it would of course lower uh, the biodiversity. No, so uh, marami sa city are not immune. So the holobion concept will uh, proposes the last. No, the proposes the last slide. Uh, uh, the last slide, the last picture, wherein why not bring the forest into the city? No? So, so, so urban planning, perhaps they could uh, uh, incorporate you know, the whole abundant concept for, for, for this. The next is One Health. You know? So, I'm going to see the slide. The next is One Health. You know? So, uh, One Health, if you would. Uh, uh, read about it no so this is actually focusing you know, focusing on three aspects of health the health of humans the health of animals and the health of the environment so they propose that these three interacts no so uh, if no if you are going to uh, plan for a healthy human agenda you should be able to have plans for how to make the animals healthy whether the animals will be for food or whether the animals will be probable vectors in the wild etc okay and of course the environment as well no so tinitingnan dito ngayon yung interaction ng tatlo i have here I, an example ayan okay so these are of the emerging uh, zoonosis in the la last two decades, I think, yes, in the last two decades. And if you would take note, 
tignan natin dito kung ano yung mga reservoir host or kung saan sila makikita before they interact uh, with humans or they can be transmitted to humans. And these are actually wild or uh, domesticated animals that we should be taking care of in One Health approach. You can picture now you can picture one health approach as something like this no so when humans no when humans uh, tries to interact with wild animals okay uh, like for instance hunting we poach them or what you're exposing each other so kung anong meron kang mga viruses bacteria etc so nagkakaroon tayo ng exchange okay so when i go back to my family magkakaroon din yan ng exchange Okay, and then when the animal go, goes back, for instance, to the wild, magkakaroon siya ng exchanges with, with those other uh, animals. So they, would, they say, you know, they say that here on the, on this uh, outer circles, no, so these are the probable uh, interventions. No? These are the probable interventions on why humans will be interacting with animals. No, will, our humans will be interacting with the environment to cause an increase in uh, infections or diseases. So, for instance, for uh, for a for policy, no, uh, for policy interventions or considerations, we can take a look at this slide. Uh, considering, uh, say, for instance, for the environment, let's take a look at issues on urban health. Let's take a look at issues on climate change, deforestation, and wise use of uh, resources, and then international travels, displacement, and migrations. Let's take a look at these particular concerns, which may be connected, no? connected with paano ba nagiging malusog yung tao at paano ba nagiging malusog yung mga animals. In the same way that, uh, say, for instance, available diagnosis and treatment, ang dyan ba? No, kagaya ngayon, bakit, bakit marami nagka-clamor ng mass testing? No? Or bakit marami nagsasabi na we are under-tested? Bakit nga ba? No? And then health promotion and prevention, are we really promoting health? No? Are we really educating the people to, to step up and you know, sila na yung magsasabi na I want to be healthy? The determinants of health, access to health care, Disease surveillance and illegal hunting is this present in our policies? No? And then, of course, policies for vector control, competition among species, animal migration, and international alliances. This is for poaching and illegal wild trade. No? So this is the concept for uh, One Health, which we would like to propose for as policy. And then my, my last the paradigm to share to you is one of uh, my favorite, which is the planetary health. Uh, I don't know if uh, lahat tayo ay familiar with this one. This is quite a new discipline. We're actually merging traditional uh, medical science and the uh, environmental studies, no? So that we will be able, parang ganito eh, gusto kong aralin yung environment. Alamin yung mga factors. No? Mga, ano ba yung mga reasons bakit tayo nagkakasakit that have relationship no? and then you will address the environment to make you healthy no? so I'll, I'll give an example later on so here uh, planetary health is uh, it says it broadens health research to include the external systems that uh, sustain or threaten human health uh, in 2015, it was defined as the health of civilization and the state of the natural systems on which it depends. But in recent, that the, in recent uh, uh, definitions, like in 2019, it is now an international and interdisciplinary field focused on characterizing and addressing human health impacts of global environmental change. So here is one example. No? So this, I borrowed this slide from Renzo Ginto one of uh, my partners in um, advocating for planetary health. So he got this from Myers 2017. And uh, from this slide, nakikita nyo ba doon yung underlying drivers? Okay, so we have consumption. We have demographic shifts. 
we have technology. So these are the underlying drivers which will affect or influence our ecological drivers, right? So the ecological drivers, yung nabanggit natin kanina, we have pollution, climate change, no, and the likes, okay? And these particular uh, drivers will be uh, inputted to uh, the next layer, to yung mga air quality, okay, food production, infectious disease studies, no? And then the, la the next one will be uh, all the Ano ba yung mga pwede nating interventions like governance, technology, etc. And then the last one, of course, will be our health effects. So, in planetary health, we would like to study these drivers. Ano yung influence? No? So, para if I address the drivers, ano yung impact niya sa health effects? No? So, sa halip na tinututukan natin yung mga pasyente la, let's try to uh, silipin din yung mga other factors that influences having those infectious diseases. Now, this is also true for malnutrition, non-communicable diseases, uh, mental health, and the likes. So, uh, in, in this slide, uh, this, this is just uh, a suggestion that uh, the next pandemic could be prevented by ending the wildlife trade, particularly that most um, of uh, our emerging infections, 75%, no, sabi ko kanina, are coming from uh, zoonotic infections. Let's try stop no, uh, wildlife trade and let's reinvest in the monitoring of potential zoonosis. So uh, my, my last slide will be uh, showing off my friends from the Planetary Health Philippines. I think uh, some of them are watching right now. We would really like to have you uh, to join us, no? um, we are students, uh, academicians, uh, we have innovators, we have uh, transport experts, uh, and we would just like to incorporate all our initiatives to study our uh, environment so that we will be addressing um, public health in that particular matter. Okay. I think this will be my final slide. I will be uh, uh, leaving you with this uh, quote. No? So today, however, most of the pathogens are still winning. And despite the rise of modern medicine in the 20th century, they are more dangerous today in terms of the future of modern humans than at any time in history. Okay. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions. I hope I can answer all your questions. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Doc Len, sa isang napaka-comprehensive and extensive discussion, not just on COVID, but on other zoonotic okay. diseases as uh -huh. well. Um, before we open... Um, we have the open forum uh, from the questions ng ating audience. Uh, we have here a couple of questions from our organizers. Um, the first one would be, um, a 1973 medical journal showed that of the 181 diseases known to be zoonotic, 63% were reported in the Philippines. Did these emerge from our disturbed forests or did these come from overseas? Ah, okay, thank you very much no, for that question. Um, 1973 paper na no? actually that that challenged me hinanap ko yung paper <laughs> that challenged me na no? uh, I, I i also found that paper and uh, it says that uh meron, meron akong kodigo, ha? okay lang ba, no? um most of the during that time no so the country have experienced war no uh the country have experienced several changes no back in 1946 i also saw a paper na meron na daw tayong uh, uh, tawag dito deforestation starting 1946 so biruin mo yon as early as that we have been uh, troubling no the environment uh, at least no uh, in that particular paper the 1973 paper by Steele, no uh, these are all mga veterinarians so, so they focused on uh, they have reported some uh, viral, bacterial, protozoal, no, uh, zoonotic diseases. And they say that some of them are endemic. 
ibig sabihin, may mga strains na dito sa atin meron tayo nun, no? But there are also some infections or strains that have been uh, anong tawag dito? incorporated. So perhaps they were brought by wars, perhaps they were brought by traders, perhaps they were bought by uh, other means, like tourism for that matter. Um, yung isa pa po nating tanong is the level of habitat and biodiversity loss proportional to the exponential increase of a zoonotic disease severity. May ganun bang correlation or computation ah, tayo? I think it's not really severity. So, uh, marami kasing factors that would contribute sa pagiging malala o severe ng isang sakit. But I think it can be, uh, I mean, I will be confident to say that the relationships na proportional would be the more you are exposed, mas mataas yung chance ng spread. Now, it's not necessarily mas malala, but that the increase in spread would be uh, in that particular relationship. Um, the other question is, what steps must be taken by government to reduce the risk of local spillovers of emerging infectious diseases? And I think another important um, question is, how can ordinary citizens contribute, given yung mga paradigms na shinare nyo din po kanina? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yung ginagawa actually natin yun sa ECQ is one of the most simple yet very effective way of uh, decreasing no, the transmission of the virus. No? Staying home, uh, distancing with people, washing our hands, yun yung mga simplong magagawa ng isang mamamayan. Whether it's gonna be COVID, whether it's gonna be a bacterial diarrheal infection or otherwise. So I think for, for the government, medyo malawak kasi ang, ang, ang sakop no, ng isang kahit outbreak lang no kahit outbreak lang siya at hindi pa pandemic napaka lawak ito no pero kung titignan mo ya analyze mo yung iba ibang bansa ano yung mga ginawa nila bakit yung iba kaya na nila bakit yung iba hindi no so so the government can craft policies i think we have some groups that are crafting policies meron yung mga advisors this is some task force doing all those things and then the the second one is the medical team no sila ngayon yung nag-iisip ng mga paraan na paano ba natin i-test yung mga tao no paano ba natin sila gagamutin no so nag yun yung role ng uh, mga ano yan and then of course so, tayo, uh, each household, I think the, the, that particular role uh, natin is really to follow those particular policies and really keep away from the ano. Balikan natin yung triangle. No? Balikan natin yung, tayo, natin yung triangle. For us to have that particular disease in that Venn diagram, kailangan ng complete exposure. So kahit nandyan yung virus, pero malayo ka naman, and that your environment it's not conducive for the virus and you to and to be exposed no walang infection okay so so for the holobion concept ang magagawa mo is to uh, help your microbiota be balanced no eat, eat a balanced diet yun lang naman ang kailangan natin no so for the one health and the planetary health i think this will take more of a policies. No? Kailangan ito medyo policies na. It, it, it's, it's parang iba-ibang sector kasi siya na magtutulungan. Um, I have a few questions lang po before I read um, the ones from the audience. Yung, yung una, I guess, is pinakita niyo yung mga iba't-ibang diseases or pandemics through time, um, through the millennium. Um, but itong recent it's very curious kasi there, 2002 nga, there was SARS, 2012, there was MERS, puro coronavirus. Um, why, bakit itong coronavirus in particular ang nag emerge recently? I mean, um, hindi siya katulad, yung flu kasi matagal na. I think the WHO said they, they were not expecting, I guess, a coronavirus pandemic kasi it's the flu pandemic talaga na inaabangan nila. Mm -mm. Uh, that's uh, alam mo question ko din yan. <laughs> Tanong ka din yan, why coronaviruses? No? So uh, we, we cannot have a very definite answer na ano yung next pandemic, no? But we can we can always parang ang sabi nga namin na virologists, we can always predict, no? 
alin kaya ang susunod? So, during the time of the swine um, influenza pandemic, yun ang pinadik nila. The next pandemic will be a mega super duper influenza. No? But it was not. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, somehow, no, somehow we, we know how to deal with influenza right now. No? Di, di ko pa sinasabing we totally contain influenza. No, not yet. But but I think no since coronaviruses no coronaviruses are zoonotic hindi lang hindi lang talaga yung virus ang kailangan natin tutukan dito I think we really have to study where the virus came from no so coronaviruses parang pabibo or pabida in the last few years because probably some environmental factors have been contributing to that uh, emergence we really need to study that no so kailangan nating tignan yung aspeto na yon so that we will have answers to that question. Last from me would be how big of a factor is climate change? Because we talked about yung habitat loss. Ito yung mga direct talaga na nakakasira sa, uh, nakakontribute sa environmental degradation. But there was a recent study, for example, na air pollution um, correlated siya. Mas mataas yung risk ng population in countries na mataas yung air pollution. Um, other than that, parang gano kalaki na yung risk or yung threat ng climate change when it comes to the health of the people right now. Yeah, thank you very much for that question. <laughs> no. Uh ang climate change kasi is gradual, right? So kumbaga, nararamdaman na natin siya noon, nararamdaman natin siya unti-unti hanggang ngayon, but we never know when we will reach the peak. No? So, parang ganun. so right now, wala pa talagang strong evidence to connect that climate change has a direct impact with COVID-19 or the virus. No? Wala pa. Um, but, no, ang tinitingnan nila is, there are several issues or concerns ng climate change, no? like warming of the planet and the likes, that would influence the susceptibility of the host. Tayo, no? so that nagiging mas no mas prone tayo sa sakit no another one is the the chances of the wild animals no the, the chances of the wild animals pero mo climate change uh, may impact doon sa kaniyang habitat they would go somewhere and it 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 may be no uh, increase the chances of them be a, being exposed no, to humans. So, yun yung parang indirect way that perhaps uh, climate change can contribute to uh, diseases like COVID-19, but right now, there is no sufficient data to back it up. Um, so, sisimula na po natin um, i-share yung mga tanong from our chat group. Yung una po natin um, tanong is uh, on the nature of COVID nineteen. Is there any signature that will tell us what the path that the pathogen is laboratory made? What um, important virulent factors made it more prevalent and more damaging? Um, dag dag don yung why do you why do you think we still don't have a vaccine for COVID nineteen? I think interesting yung sa laboratory made. I remember. Um, watching another webinar naman for journalists saying na mas related siya dun sa galing sa nature kaysa dun sa SARS. Basta may, may ganong um, logic yung mga experts natin. Can you explain that po? Uh, parang ganito ah. Uh, sa genome sequencing kasi, meron tayong mga malalamang information about a certain virus. So, ah, ang virus pala na. Parang tayo, may fingerprint tayo, di ba? So, uh, each of those fingerprints of the genome will tell us or give us idea na, ah, pinsan ito ni ganyan, kapatid ito ni ganyan, it came from this place, etc. So, meron din tayo mga criteria, na meron din mga tayong criteria na sinusunod, that these are some, that these are engineered. Na, sa, sa genetic engineering kasi, pag nagpasok ka ng isang gene or isang segment, kapirasong information dun sa genome na yun, meron yung tinatawag na tag or marker. Okay? So, pwede mo yung makita. 
yun. So, pag sinequence mo, oh, teka, teka, ano to? Parang, parang hindi naman to natural na may ganong particular gene. So, there are some parameters na sinusunod ng mga molecular biologists, bioinformaticians, para malaman na ito ay engineered, ito ay fake na virus, at hindi ito galing sa nature. And just to clarify for this, for COVID-19, um, was it proven na ba? Um, hindi na nila tinatanggap yung ganong possibility na uh, laboratory made siya? Uh, not necessarily na tinanggap na nila that it's laboratory made, but this time, no, as of uh, this time, ang date lang nila ay sinasabi na galing siya sa nature. Mm. No, but they're not, kumbaga, they're not closing uh, the book yet no uh, that it is laboratory made but so far after the data that they have uh, recovered no based on uh, so many publications it's natural na no? so mm-hmm. bigay ni mother nature um okay yung isa po nating tanong on the holobiont approach, how do we do rewilding via the aggressive expansion of housing, commerce, and industry? What alternative methods of maintaining biodiversity in an urban setting? And I think important sa Pilipinas, we don't really do much of urban planning. <laughs> Hindi naman tayo, wala tayong planned city. So, ano po ba ang pwedeng advice siguro ng experts for the government? Oh, I, I think this is a very good uh interaction uh, talaga with of, of microbiologists with urban planners, landscape artists, yung mga etc. No? Uh, kung mapapansin nyo, marami naman ngayon na, na developments that deals with uh, including parks or including mini forests in their uh, uh, events. No? But of course, ilan lang yon kumpara sa, sa napakalawak na non, uh, non-environment friendly areas. Uh, it will be a good move for, for the government, for instance, or the policy makers to involve no, um, uh, urban planners for that. Natutuwa ako niyon kapag nakakita ko ng developments na meron silang greening plan. No? Doon kasi sa holobiont concept is uh, binabalik mo yung ano ba yung natural na microorganisms na nasa paligid, nasa environment, that would help you not to be susceptible to infection. So kung, map- kung mapapansin nyo minsan yung mga nasa probinsya, di ba, sila yung mga malulusog. No? Because that would sh- uh, shun away all the pollution matters no? and other stuff, which will make, up susep- make us susceptible to the disease. So the park, the greening, no? uh, that can help us. No? One way to help us with the holobion concept. Balikan ko pala doc yung dun sa nature of covid. Um bakit siya how why do you think na kumalat siya ng ganito? I mean yung sa is it parang mas malaki na yata yung effect niya compared sa SARS and SARS. Um ano ba yung nasa genetic makeup niya that makes it so parang viral or uh, masyadong makapit yung kanyang mga receptors? Bakit ganun? Oo. Nasa nature niya talaga yon no? So, kung umapapansin nyo, uh, ang bilis-bilis niya kumalat compared to SARS. So, although mas marami pa rin yung death na nangyari sa SARS, ito naman ay spread. No? Kung baga, masyado siyang bibo na kumalat. Why? No? Uh, one nature is that, uh, ang tinitingnan nilang aspeto ngayon is that even if you're asymptomatic, or pre-asymptomatic. Ang pre-asymptomatic, ibig sabihin, meron ka naman talaga, pero hindi pa lang yung demo para magpakita ng symptoms. No? At merong asymptomatic, ibig sabihin, andyan na yung sakit, talagang hindi ka nagpapakita ever <laughs> hanggang sa makarecover ka. And those are the people na, akaya, na hindi natin iniiwasan, pero dapat pala. No? So, the, so kumbaga, yung, manifest, yung, yung pathogenicity niya o yung manifestation ng virus kapag nasa loob na ng tao is very complex. No? So ang, ang, ang nangyayari sa kanya is, uh, kaya nga pag tin, tinignan mo yung mga pasyente or kinahon mo yung pasyente na umiwas sa mga umuubong pasyente, natalo ka na agad ng virus. Diba? So it's, in, it's, it's the nature of the viruses, its characteristics, yung pag-replicate niya 
ganun siya kabilis. Plus the fact that, um, ang sinasabi ko nga lagi, marami kasing hindi pa masyadong alam ano yung dapat iwasan during that period na nagkakalat siya hanggang ngayon no so so ang 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 spread niya is through droplets halimbawa nagdadaldalan tayo na hindi through the computer i can share droplets no and these droplets may have viruses no so halimbawa kung naaalala niyo nung unun una hindi pa ina-advocate yung mask kasi nung inaaral yung viruses sinasabi dun sa data na ah hindi kailangan yung mask okay but nung later on nakita na nila sa data na teka 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 sabi kasi dito ganyan ganyan and then we are now we are now uh, uh, donning our masks no as part of our OOTD uh, that is that is normal for a new virus wala na wala tayong information So parang binibigay niya yung kanyang characteristic little by little. So hangga't hindi natin siya kilala fully, it will continue to spread. And the only thing we can really do is to prevent it from spreading like social distancing, masks, hand washing, etc. Yung isa pong tanong kanina, why do you think we still don't have a vaccine for COVID-19? Um, uh, dagdag ko po dyan, I remember, kasi parang may mga experts saying na uh, after going through SARS and MERS, parang hindi masyadong inaral ng international medical community yung how to protect ourselves from coronaviruses. Oo, tama yan. No? Um, ang, ang ano kasi, ang um, dito, Uh, paggawa ng bakuna, maraming maraming factors to consider, no? Uh, at hindi lahat ng diseases ay pwede mong gawa ng vaccine, no? Um, ang pinaka challenge kasi para sa coronavirus, being it a zoonotic disease, ito yung number one challenging lagi sa ano eh, sa paggawa ng bakuna. Zoonotic ba siya? No? So kung mapapansin nyo, napakatagal gawin ng mga bakuna na involve ay zoonotic diseases. No? Malaria. Ilang taon na tayo, decades no? na may malaria. Recently lang sila nagsabi na parang okay itong may vaccine na ito. No? So uh, unless we have completely studied the genome of the virus or any pathogen, it's really hard to start telling no or na ito ito na yung ito na yung vaccine na yan no so uh, after studying the genome pero uh, i just want to to look at this positively na no? uh, ngayon kasi it's just a matter of days we have known the genome of the Wuhan SARS-CoV-2 no at kapag alam mo na yung genome makikita mo na doon yung weak points niya pwede mo na yung gamitin as a vaccine. Parang gano'n. No? Or pwede mo na yung gawin as a drug. But vaccine trials will take a long time. No? So pwede na sinabi sa atin after two weeks is, we have a good vaccine candidate. Oh, we can have a long list of vaccine candidates. But the trials are very important. At hindi lang naman pinaka-importante na it will be effective. The, the second will be, it is safe. And it, it would entail another set of trials that it has to be proven safe as well. No? So ayaw natin na, oy effective yung bakuna. <laughs> Pero biglang ay, bukas pala, magra-rupture na yung liver ko. No? So uh, maraming consideration. It will take a long while, but I think it's faster now compared to the time of Jenner. <laughs> Meron pong, uh, for me lang na follow-up question, merong mga nagsasabi na the virus supposedly developed at the same time, hindi lang siya galing sa buwan. Is this possible for a virus to develop from different countries or different areas? Ah, yung pwede kang maggawa ng virus sa lab mo using the genome information, actually pwede naman. No? So uh, may, meron tayong mga tinatawag na Uh, you can synthesize the genome, not necessarily the virus, the same virus, no? but you can synthesize the genome. Pwede na po yung gawin sa laboratory ngayon kung kailangan mo talagang aralin. That's why yung sinabi nila na uh, from, from uh, this country, 
uh, na na ano pa to na construct na nila yung virus or na pag-grow na nila yung virus that it's possible right now okay so but, I but we... for ano lang yun na for for studies purposes ha wag yung gagawin na <laughs> wag yung gagawin for uh, unethical reasons <laughs> Dumadami na yung mga tanong natin. We have um, 13, sec- 13 minutes before 12, but we'll try to accommodate as many questions. Um, may nagtatanong, is there a possibility that the Philippines could would adopt a holobiont approach? I hope. <laughs> I really hope. I'm calling all the um, you know, yung mga advocates natin sa environment that I, I hope we, we can lobby that, that we, we would start greening uh, and think about this greening intervention as a way to lessen the incidence of various diseases in a community. Meron ding uh, bumabate someone from Iloilo Agri and Professor Rowena Bokiren from UP Baguio. Uh, thanking you for giving this talk and informing us. Okay, uh, thank so... Thank you, thank you. Um, ito yung isa pang tanong from YouTube naman. How can COVID-19 still manage to reinfect the same people who recovered considering they developed some sort of immunity? Can it be cured the same way? Can this virus evolve further? Uh, iba-iba po kasi yung viruses. No? So kung mapapansin nyo, pag nagkaroon kayo ng chicken pox, iba hindi na kayo magkaka-chicken pox ulit. Kasi ang uh, chicken pox po ay merong tinatawag na immunity, no? memory. So kapag nahawa ka na at dumating ul- at ma-infect ka ulit ng kapitbahay, hindi na kasi sasabihin ng immune system mo, di ba we met? Yan, mga ganun, no? But for coronaviruses, there has been no data of memory. Uh, so you can still get reinfected. No? So uh, lalo na kung halimbawa mild case ka lang dati or, you know, <laughs> Ito po yung sad, sad fact no? sa hospital. No? So, you're exposed. Pa- first patient, you get some viruses. Punta ka sa next room, get. You can still get it. And you, you do it daily, right? So, that's why the, the healthcare workers are at a risk. No? And they will get reinfected. No? Uh, Many times. No? So, yun. so far, wala pa pong data na nagsasabi na we can get memory. That's why it's also a challenge no, for vaccine developers kasi walang memory. <laughs> Parang gano'n. Um, on transboundary concerns, what could we have done to contain the disease early on? Should we be more strict in accepting tourism via the One Health concept? Um, how about migratory birds? And should China be held accountable for the spread? Uh, that's a very interesting question, alam mo. Kasi uh, kaila, ito, yung, ito yung ina-advocate ko nga na talagang hindi lang yung virus yung aaralin mo. Eh. This is not just true for COVID. This is also true for avian flu, etc. Et so kung virus lang yung aaralin mo, hindi mo alam na, meron, na pwede mo pala siyang makuha sa migratory bird. Hindi mo, pala, hindi mo alam na pwede mo pala siyang makuha sa airport. Pwede mo pala siyang makuha sa temperate country pero may may travel ka doon. Something like that, no? So we have to know that particular circle of the virus, no? Yung environment na ginagalawan ng virus and what is a conducive environment for you to get infected. Ano nga ba yung pwede nating sabihin na bakit kasi hindi ginawa to? Yung mga ganyan, no? I, I think the the late, no? Uh, the late uh, banning of travel, particularly in areas na mataas yung cases. Med- med- medyo na late tayo ng konti doon. Yes, of course, it would hurt uh, tourism, it would hurt trade, but kasi meron kasi yung balance, no? check and balance. Siguro hindi nila na-anticipate na ganito kalala si COVID-19. Maybe. No? So we're not sure. Kasi nga, bago siya, hindi mo pa siya kilala. Unless, no, unless na pag kilala mo na kagaya ng bird flu, pag bird flu season, ang dami na agad naka uh, angkla na policy, no? Na bawal to, bawal diyan, ganyan, ganyan, etc. But but we don't know COVID. So perhaps na late tayo ng konti doon, no, sa sa pagban, pag-close kumbaga ng ating borders. 
uh, some countries were very effective with that. I think Taiwan did it, no? Um, on socioeconomic factors, how do we consider the migration of people driven landless and poor in the countryside to urban areas? Um, so parang considering na marami, at least in the Philippines, a city siya kumalat, how do we consider IPs or indigenous peoples and their traditional hunting practices? Is there a relationship between IPs and zoonotic diseases? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not an expert in IPs, no? so I, I have no data to, to show or to share to you whether what are their experiences with these particular pandemics and the previous pandemics. Perhaps if there's someone right now who's in the audience that is into anthro and um, or medical anthropology, this is really a very good opportunity to, you know, to, to study na uh, yung practices ba nila that, kasi ang alam ko lang sa IPs is this, IPs are one with the environment, no? So isa siya, kasama nila, parang isa siya, no? So, so uh, I, I really don't know uh, uh, if I, I'll be the baga, authority ba ako para mag-share ng anything with the IPs, no? But for the migration from, say, countryside to the city, ganyan, um, as long as, no, as long as the, for COVID, no, as long as the distancing, the, the physical, the, the hygiene main, maintenance is uh, uh, ginagawa ng mga tao, yung, yung mga ganyan, I, I think pwede naman eh. No? So kumbaga, ang, ang problema lang kasi sa atin talaga, may mga opportunities na wala kang choice. <laughs> like halimbawa, pasok ka, mag MRT ka, may choice ka ba <laughs> na mag physical distance? I doubt it, no? May chance ka ba na hindi hahawak sa 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 anong tawag doon, 'di ba? Uh, so so kumbaga may mga situations na mahirap. But yung ideal, pwede naman, no? But again, it's ideal, no? Ideal. So uh, meron mga ako, meron ako mga nababasa na what if we leave the quarantine and then may mga groups na pwede nang pumasok, no? Ng mga ganun. Well, kung titignan mo yung economy, oo nga naman, kawawa naman talaga sila. No? But we have to make sure, we have to ensure that all the protection they could get from contracting the virus are in place before you allow them to work. Or else, wala. Resurge na naman yan. Yung question on reinfection of immunity we have from YouTube pero nasagot niyo na doc kanina. Um, follow up then is what do we think of for, of calls for developing herd immunity? I'm not sure if this question is related yung ginagawa ng Netherlands, I think, na pinapabayaan lang nila yung mga tao na mag-develop para maging immune sila. Um, what do you think about herd immunity? Uh, 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 herd immunity talaga yung uh, gusto natin. No? Uh, Maganda naman talaga yung aspect ng herd immunity. That is the main goal of vaccination. That is because if one person is vaccinated, meron siyang nakasalubong na may sakit, in-stop na niya automatic agad yung transmission. Okay? So, uh, herd immunity kung may vaccine is optimal. Pero kung wala pang vaccine and that we expose one another <laughs> para magkaroon tayo na halika magyakapan tayo kasi may increase yung immunity natin. Take note again, wala po tayong immune memory. Okay? And we really don't know yet how our immune system will really fight off this particular virus as of today. So antabay po tayo sa mga data on on how we really ano. Uh, kung kung makikita niyo meron silang sinas mga mga pra, mga interventions na ginagawa ngayon, yung mga plasma therapy, gamot, vaccine candidates, lahat po 'yon ay iniintay natin at kasabay po noon yung pag-aaral kung paano nakaka-recover yung mga nakarecover. Kasi iba-ibahin po yung profile nila. Merong mga nakarecover Walang antibodies. Diba? So that means may ibang way. No? So ano kaya yon? So di pa rin natin alam. Meron naman na puro antibodies naman. No? So, so we really don't know. For herd immunity, it's for vaccination. No? So intayin natin yung vaccine. 
but for exposing ourselves to one another to increase herd immunity, um, baka po hindi ganun. Um, as of now, masasabi po ba natin extendable or hindi ang ECQ? How involved is UP Manila in policy making? Is this something that you would recommend, I guess? Do you have a working relationship with the current government? Okay. Uh, ako personally ay hindi kasali. <laughs> uh, meron kaming mga responsibilities. No? But there are people from UP Manila that are members of the task force advisory uh, sila yung mga nag advice ng many aspects of uh, the ECQ and other matters, the testing kits, the, the interventions, yung mga either it's gonna be the vaccine, kung maraming aspects po ang ginagawa, uh, sinasalihan or ini-involve ini ng uh, UP Manila. Um, with regards to the ECQ, ano yung sabi niyo po kanina, ECQ? Kung Would ka extendable po ba? And I guess if you would recommend na extend pa. Kasi uh, 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 this is my personal opinion. This is not the opinion of UP Manila. <laughs> Para ganun, no? The, this, uh, based on the, the data, no, tinitinan natin na data of cases, etc. No? Uh, and the testing, no, gano'n na ba karami yung natitest, gano'n na ba karami yung cases natin. Uh, kung opinion ko po, no, para sa akin, parang I need more tests to see the real numbers of uh, uh, the cases. No? Um, but I'm happy that the recoveries are now escalating. No? Uh, we are very happy about that. But, but to say that we are really you know, uh, flattening the curve and so forth, I'm not sure yet uh, because of uh, probably the, the testing numbers. Uh, I would love to see more testing. Uh, kahit limited yung setting natin. I think increase in testing at, uh, ay makakapagbigay sa atin ng totoong picture or totoong number ng ating statistics. In that way, we can say that we will be confident enough to, to go out of our houses and back to the new normal na <laughs> sinasabi nila. But this is just my opinion. No? Uh, of course, that will be just the uh, parang opinion ng isang microbiologist. No? There are there are other matters that would go in sa opinion na yon to lift or not to lift like yung other na ano like economy uh, uh, ano pa nga ba yung iba yung mga treatment etc etc oh you doc you we mentioned na kanina yung sa climate change na pag-usapan natin on the warming uh, there's a question though na could uh, gmo in agriculture oh, have an effect on the distribution of pathogens what do you mean gmo yung mga genetically modified um, organisms. I guess sa agriculture kasi um, it's widely used. Crops? Yeah, crops. Yeah. Sa crops po ba? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if, if, if there's a connection, but right now I have no idea if there, there is a connection uh, for the GMO crops. No? Uh, ang, ang clear connection would be the wildlife trade directly affecting the COVID-19 uh, cases. Okay. Um, I guess, kahit briefly lang po, what ecological policy can we advocate to prevent the development and spread of such new diseases such as SARS, COVID, avian flu, and the like? I think yung na-mention yun sa mga paradigms. Mm -mm. Oo, oo, oo. Uh, doon sa planetary health, no? uh, we clearly advocate uh, studying each of the ecological drivers. No? Climate change is one. No? So, kailangan natin tignan yung various ecological drivers to be inserted or included in the policy to address pandemics, particularly pandemics that are zoonotic in nature. Uh, I, I get to see a national pandemic preparedness plan of the country. Tinitignan ko yun sa DOH website. Sabi nila meron, but uh, wala ko nakikita pa, but but perhaps uh, we could get hold of that para makita natin kung meron bang ecological uh, concept or uh, environment concept that is uh, there. No? Baka kailangan natin siyang lagyan or i-beef up. Nako, Doc Len, kailangan na nating tapusin. Um, ang dami, oh. pang, ang dami pa talagang actually nagsisend ng mga tanong, pero... 
Uh, don't worry dun sa mga hindi nabasang tanong. We'll be compiling. And if may panahon si Doc Len, baka pwede niya pong sagutin yun para sa atin. Tapos isha-share na lang natin. Um, okay. I guess, Doc Len, before I do my synthesis ng mga napag-usapan natin ngayon at i-announce natin yung mga susunod nating webinar, um, pwede po ba kahit saglit lang? Uh, y- yung dimension na, na yung wildlife trade, it's really the environmental degradation na the root cause of these kinds of pandemics. And for the Philippines, isa siyang malaking issue dahil mega diverse. Isa tayo sa mga uh, just the dozens of countries in the world na mega diverse talaga. Um, and unfortunately, I think wala din masyadong pag-aaral um, on, uh, I mean, on all uh, aspects, di ba? Hanggang ngayon, marami pa tayong nadidiscover ng mga bagong um, species, ng mga animals. I mean, even just that. Um, so, siguro for the Philippines, ano po yung importanteng um, ma maisip ng ating mga policymakers, ng ating government? Kasi now the focus is really on the healthcare system, di ba? Flattening the curve. Paano makaka uh, makaka magiging ready tayo na hindi tayo ma overwhelm dun sa dami ng nagkakasakit. But but really, um, parang is it a are we a ticking time bomb kung baga? Kasi di ba kahit yung 2018 was the centennial anniversary of the Spanish flu. Ang sabi ng mga experts or medical sa medical field was it's really just a question of when the next pandemic would be. And so for for the Philippines, um, isa lang tayong maliit na bansa, but we're very rich in biodiversity. And unfortunately, there all also a lot of environmental degradation issues. Ano po ba ang dapat alalahan ni ng policymakers and the public as well? Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, I think that's a uh, uh, very important consideration. No? So, gusto kong tignan yung rich biodiversity ng Philippines sa dalawang aspeto. So, yung unang aspeto, uh, marami talagang mga mikrobyo okay, na matatagpuan sa loob ng mga gubat. Okay? Bakit sila nandun? Kasi may role sila doon. Okay. Uh, the, the best thing is, wag mo silang ialis doon. Okay? Kasi andun sila because they you never know how it will adapt. Okay? How it will adapt and ano yung kaya niyang gawin na hindi favorable for you. Marami pang undiscovered microorganisms. They can be found in the forest, they can be found in the ocean floor napaka lawak pa ng pwedeng gawin. Um, they, they, kung, kung titignan nga natin, ang onti-onti pa talaga ng listahan ng mga mikrobyo natin. At maliit lang naman yung percentage ng disease causing. No? So, let them stay there. Kung baga, wag, wag nyo silang guluhin. Okay? Sabi, nga, sabi nga namin palagi is, oo nga, zoonotic viruses for instance, ay nasa hayop. So, let them stay there. No? So, ang i-prevent natin is yung transmission from that animals to humans. So, the second aspect ng biodiversity is yung cure. Okay? So, there are so many initiatives now that are checking out possible cure dun sa mga disease natin na nahihirapan na tayong pagalingin. No? na nanggagaling sa marine life, no? unexplored marine life, unexplored forest areas. So imagine, if you destroy your biodiversity, you lose two things. First, you lose yung safety mo dahil sa pathogens and encounter with these vectors or animal reservoirs. And second, you lost the possible cure. So I think for policymakers, we really need to check these particular areas and include them no, in the policy. Kailangan natin sabihin at i-advocate. Huwag naman natin masyadong katigan yung pagsira ng mga environment. No? Kasi we really don't know what we will be losing at the end. No? Uh, kung nakikita nyo yung mga marine sanctuaries being destroyed and then on the other side of the story 
these marine wildlife or resources produces the most potent uh, ano ba yung na, na discover ni ma'am pain no pain medicine or antitoxins so if you destroy it wala na no and then of course the forests na alam mo yung uh, meron akong friend who studies ips and the uh, these IPs share about all those plant species in their community that can cure so many things. No? So if you destroy that, what will happen to us? No? Sabi ko nga dun sa aking last slide, nananalo yung mga organism. Why? Because we continue our human ways, no? uh, our ways na feeling natin tayo yung may-ari ng environment. No? and feeling oh, that ownership feeling na parang you can just do anything about it it's actually dapat baliktad no so actually to have to treat the environment as your ally or parang isa kayo no? kagaya ng mga ip so that you will both work together to prevent in, in instances like this no mga pandemic kaya natin tong ano eh kaya natin tong uh, maiwasan no if only we know the how to address or deal with the economic uh, uh, ecological drivers i think i hope the policymakers would really consider seriously na pa, para nang niniklod na ako you know, seriously no to to deal with the environment no uh, not just profits no please deal with the environment thank you very much doc lens a very insightful nating discussion um Definitely magtutuloy ito after nung webinar. Um, I'll just do a quick synthesis nung mga na-discuss ni Doc Len kanina. Uh, so Doc Len gave us a very good crash course kumbaga sa coronaviruses and yung iba't ibang klase at uh, bakit paano nga ba siya natatransmit or paano ba tong zoonotic diseases, paano siya uh, from an animal to another animal and then to humans. Um, she mentioned that 60% of all infectious diseases in humans and 75% of all emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic. Um, so isa siyang malaking uh, cause for concern sa ating public health. Um, and the fact na yung interaction of humans uh, and livestock with, li with wildlife exposes them to the risk of spillover of potential pathogens. Um, she mentioned na yung, um, yung livestock like pigs and uh, and um, chickens, as dun sa mga previous nating zoonotic diseases, they serve as an epidemi epidemiological bridge between wildlife and human infections. Um, and the fact na, uh, really, the emergence of these zoonotic diseases are anthropogenic or dahil sa tao, dahil sa atin. Um, some of these are land use, mining, climate change. Uh, may, may maganda siyang slide na shinare dun sa mga uh, talagang harmful or destructive uh, industries na nagdudulat nitong mga pagsira sa habitat ng animals na ito na which in turn uh, pushes them to um, interact with other species and it's a it's really a domino effect na no um, na umaabot sa tao nagiging deadly for us nagiging pandemic siya so she mentioned the importance of uh, ecosystem integrity uh, because if we are able to keep our ecosystems like forest intact, it will be able to regulate diseases. As she had just mentioned na uh, wag na nga nating galawin, kumaga pwedeng aralin, pero um, wag i-disturb yung kanilang ecosystem. Uh, because with an intact ecosystem, uh, we are able to support the diversity of species. So that is more difficult for one pathogen to spill over, amplify, or dominate. Um, at the same time, environmental changes have a huge impact on the emergence and as well as re-emergence. So we're not just talking about yung mga bagong diseases like coronavirus, but yung mga dating uh, natalo na natin, kumbaga, pero pa maaring uh, lumabas ulit. Um, so she mentioned na ang most at risk dito ay countries with high biodiversity. And at the same time, with serious unresolved and environmental, social, and economic issues. So... Uh, for the Philippines, that's a big um, issue for us to think about. Uh, and finally, she discussed yung ating mga eco ecology-based strategies or paradigms to, to address pandemic. So, isa yung holobiont concept um, about the microbial biodiversity, um, yung the need for a rewilded urban, yung, you know, having greens dun sa ating mga urban cities. Uh, and then the One Health uh, strategy naman, 
um, connecting paano yung, magig- yung health ng tao at the same time yung health ng animals and the health of our environment. Um, and yung last is yung planetary health na um, bago lang daw according to Doc Len, but she's advocating as well uh, where we're looking at the consumption, yung mga dr- uh, ecological drivers like demographical shifts, technology um, that affect pollution, climate change, and the other changes in our environment na pwedeng um, magkaroon ng malaking effect sa mga tao in terms of air pollution, food production, and um, finally, yung infectious diseases. Um, and really, there's a, a lot of discussion on yung pwedeng gawin. Uh, and this is given by Mother Nature, but I guess the biggest takeaway is the fact na we can still do a lot of things to prevent this from happening again. Um, because really, it's really the disturbance of the yung anthropo- anthropogenic changes nga na nag-cause nitong mga diseases na ito. Um, one suggestion niya is in the next pandemic could be prevented by ending the wildlife trade and reinvesting in the monitoring of potential uh, zoonosis. So, uh, at the end of the day, it's really may magagawa pa tayo. Uh, the go- not just the government, but at the same time, the health sector, of course, and the public um, in making our voices heard about itong mga kailangan nga nating um, baguhin sa ating um, policies, especially when it comes to the environment. So, unfortunately, uh, we don't have enough time anymore for the questions ng ating mga audience. Um, you can give your questions, ihabol nyo dito sa chat, sa YouTube at sa Zoom. And I think you can send it to Kalikasan and CEC so we can compile it and isend namin kay Doc Len. Uh, sana may panahon siya na masagot lahat ng iyon. Uh, at the same time, I think a lot of, uh, there are, were a lot of things, actually beyond um, ecosystems pa nga na na-discuss sa, sa video na ito. And this will be shared online as well. So dun sa mga late na nakapasok, you can you can follow that. Um, so uh, let me just announce yung mga susunod na, uh, susunod nating mga webinars. Um, we have two more that are very, interesting. So for the State of Philippine Environment Forum, this webinar series on, is on the ecological challenges, or ecological solutions to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, the next one would be in April 20, Risk Governance in a Time of COVID-19. Our keynote speaker would be Dr. Antonio or Tony Lavinia, the former Dean of Ateneo School of Governance, Ateneo de Manila University. Dean Tony is also an expert on climate change um, policy. So I think that will probably be discussed there as well. Um, and April 22, we have State of, the Envir- State of the Philippine Environment in a Time of COVID with uh, Rosario Guzman, who is the executive editor and head of research department of Ebon Foundation. Um, Bukod sa kanya, we'll, we'll be having um, expert panelists on water, food, and waste um, for COVID challenges. So I think um, that's all uh, the time that we could devote. Nag-extend na tayo ng 15 minutes. Um, but it has been a really fruitful discussion at marami talaga tayong um, natutunan. And I think the most important is yung refocus natin uh, bukod dun sa problema ng health sector or yung sa vaccine and the cure, um, really addressing the root cause of this uh, pandemic and future zoonotic disease pandemics as well. So maraming salamat ulit dun sa mga um, sumubaybay sa ating webinar and uh, we hope to see you dun sa mga susunod na webinars natin. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Salamat sa lahat. Thank you, ma'am. And congratulations. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am Len. Thank you, thank you. Yung mga friends sa Mindanao, salamat. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Watching from Jensen po. Oo. UPLB. Hey, ma'am. From UPLB. <laughs> Uh, uh, hi po. Di Manila, UP Dilim. May mga nakikita ko. May may Lasal sa Cavite. Hi po. <laughs> Thank you.
I will try to answer all the questions in the chat po para ma-apply. Thank you. Iipunin po namin, Doc Len, and uh, then we yes. will thank you, Leon, consolidate ha. the different questions. Yes, and Sige you po. can just post it doon sa site so that they could ano, get it. Thank yes, you. Po. Salamat po sa lahat. Thank you. And thank you very much din po sa organizers. Very helpful talaga ah, po. Thank, thank you, you, thank sir. you. Mayroon pa tayo Ma from Inokos. Hi, Ma'am Henny Dean. Hi, Ma'am Len. Thank you.